personally, um, I think that the way, like when I started making tunes, it was not easy to get in the studio and make a tune. And now, all you need is a, is a PC. So, so it's cool that now, anybody can make a tune, but the downside with that is that anybody can make a tune. And so, you know, there's a lot of toot. Whereas I used to get, um, you know, 10 demos a week. Now I'll get like 30 or 40, and, and, and it's still only one or two that are good. Um, so I think, you know, a, down, a downside of, of the way drum and bass has gone is that there's a lot more music around that, that, that maybe shouldn't be released. You know, and some people are like making tunes and if a big label don't pick it up, they're like, right, fuck it, I'll put it out myself. And then they'll sell 500 or 1,000 and it's like, that's kind of watering down things. Yeah, the way the music's gone, I mean, I'm a bit, I don't really like the way that everything is uh, very compressed and maximised and um, it, it seems to be to like a, be a little bit soulless but then you know people like Calibre and Deebridge are um, the remedy for that. Those two are sort of for me the most sort of inspirational producers. I think the m music, like drum and bass is always going to follow its own path and that is always going to be right. There isn't, you know, there is no sort of, if I was to stand there and say oh I wish it had gone more fucking jazz influenced or I wish it had gone more like this. I don't think that's, I think that it goes the, it goes the way, you know, that um, that it's just a natural path. One of the beauties of drum and bass is that nearly all of the music that's released in, and available in the shops is on record labels that's owned by us lot who love it. And so it's not some number cruncher going, right, how are we going to make 50 grand? It's someone going, oh, that tune's running. And that's, that's it. Tower to Captain Rocket Ship Star Polaris. You've been cleared for takeoff. Roger, all set tower. 8, X7, X6, X5, X4, X3, X2, X1, fire! Yeah, I think when someone like, like uh, you know, when, when Optical came into the scene, it kicked everybody up the arse because he's a fucking bad boy producer and then when Pendulum came came along it kicked everybody up the arse again it's like when Marky came along DJing wise you know it, everybody was like fucking hell you know like when I first went to Brazil this is before Marky had ever played in England he was DJing before me and normally when you go to another country the DJ that's on before you you know like a lot of the time they're really, they're really good at mixing or you know and they've got they've got good tunes but normally I think at least I've got a few tunes that I'll be able to play that they haven't got or whatever but I was standing there thinking fuck right Fuck, man, you know, and he was killing it. And I mean, if you, I mean, if you want to see something, go to Brazil and watch Marky. You know, like them people. He's like a football star. You know, like I've been there, and he's been in, a, you know, a few different newspapers on the same day. And it's the same with with Pendulum. They've come in and they've, and they've, and they've the uh, production is such good quality. A few people, you know, like I know that I, I've listened to their stuff and thought this is really fucking well produced. You know, it, it keeps it keeps the uh, the old the old gits on their toes when there's new people coming along. Um, I think that a lot of people I see, you know, like I've heard them talking or um, I've seen people comment that the drum and bass scene kind of locks it down and doesn't let, any, let anybody new in. But that's that's like the opposite. You know, like Pendulum come along, they make wicked tunes. They're in. They're like voted number one producer or whatever. You know, like they're in straight away. Groove Rider ain't phoning people up going, boy, these Pendulum boys. You know what? We've got to lock. You know, like. It's, 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 it's it, you know, it's the opposite. It's the opposite. Everybody's everybody's phoning Pendulum going, oh, have you got any, any beats I can play? So I think that if people complain about the scene is hard to get into, it's, it's a natural thing. It's not, um, you know, it's not like pop music where you can be branded as being really cool and you, and you don't have to have any substance. You know, like, if you're really good, you know, you, you, you'll succeed. You know, people probably think what a cunt he is for saying that, but... Cameraman says it's true, so it's bloody true. If you've got a problem with it, you talk to him, not me. It was I'm not it's not it wasn't even my idea, it was his idea. He's holding up. Yeah. It's all, it's, it's on my auto cue. Alex from Drum and Bass Arena. Do you ever wonder who is Alex Arena? Hear me now. <laughs> it's just so the wrong thing to say, Alex. <laughs> oh well you can tell. Did you think in party, in mm, party Glue Glue uh, drum and bass this night? Yeah. It was the best warm-up ever. <laughs> <laughs> really? No, really. <laughs> so yeah, I hope you enjoyed the CD. I hope, it, I hope there ain't no clanging. 
and maybe you can watch the DVD with the sound turned down and the, uh, the, the CD turned up. The whole thing of this DVD is that if you play the DVD at the same time as the CD, it all syncs up. Uh, but I, I didn't want to say that till the end of the DVD. But yeah, so if you do that, try that now, and then right at the end, see how it, see how it is. And then you see if there's a bit with, uh, you know, if X-Man's chatting on a certain thing, you'll see that my mouth is actually talking, and I'll be talking about fucking nonsense, while X-Man's actually chatting about, you know, lyrics and stuff. <laughs>